Now the first machining operation which you're going to observe is going to be project number one. This is going to be our facing operation where this uh, piece of redwood is going to be completely um, cut. It's going to be cut all across the top in a series of straight lines and arcs. It's going to be very systematic. Um, hopefully you'll be able to design one that's very similar as far as what it does. Now, the most important thing I want to talk about right now is cutting air. Before we run any program and start cutting parts with it, what we have to do is tell the CNC machine that the Z-axis where this part lies, Z0, which is the top face of this part, we have to fool the machine and tell it that it's uh, uh, to essentially get it to run one inch above the part. Now, there's a very good reason for that. CNC machines are expensive. Materials expensive. Cutters are expensive. We don't want to figure out that there was something wrong with our program by crashing it into something. Now, CNC machines like this one here, it probably wouldn't be that big of a deal. Probably just break a cutter. But if I had a much bigger CNC machine that moves faster and had a lot more powerful motor, well, then I can start breaking parts on my CNC machine, which starts costing big time money. So every time we run a new program, it's really important that we cut air with it. So we run it one inch above on the Z axis and watch it do its job and make sure that it is good to go before we cut material. Now that said, I have installed the dust boot here so you can't see the cutter underneath. Um, this is gonna catch all the dust, that, uh, the dust and chips that we create by doing the machining process. It's always, always, always a good idea to run one of these, run a vacuum system of some type, especially when you're cutting with wood. Um, at this point, I've already done the proofing process, so I watched the machine run the entire program one inch above. I know I'm good to go. Um, I've already set my X, Y's, and Z's, which you, I will show you guys in another video. But at this point, I'm ready to cut. So when I'm cutting, it's going to get pretty loud in here. You're probably going to want to turn your speakers down. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the spindle because in this machine, it is separate. It's not automatic. I'm going to turn on the vacuum and the vacuum actually is louder than the machine itself. So let me get this thing at my zero zero point. I'm going to turn my spindle on. And it's going to start cutting, so you may want to turn down your speakers right now.
So you will notice the extreme color difference in the facing operation. Now this machine is has a little bit of play in it, which is why you see some of the lines in here. But with our machine at school, you would hardly see almost any lines, nothing that a light sanding wouldn't take away. Um, the point here is this is much more flat now than it was before. The wood was actually kind of warped. It took that warp out and it completely renewed the surface. And now this is at a true zero with our machine as well. So that's machining operation uh, project number one, facing.